Hey everybody, welcome back to Honestly Bilal. I'm fourth year medical student, uh, Bilal Ahmed at the University of Toledo. I'm here today with my guest, Victoria Lee. Victoria is a fourth year medical student at the University of Arkansas, and we're both applying for ophthalmology this upcoming fall for residency. So Victoria, welcome. Good to be with you. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here with you. Yeah, you've been all over Twitter. You've always been championing everything I'm doing out here. So I had to bring you on as a guest. Uh, it's a huge honor for me. I mean, I, as soon as we got on here, I felt like we already became friends. So uh, again, this is a fun part for me is to meet people and to just connect like this in a way that we never probably would have imagined six months ago, but here we are. Mm -hmm, for sure, for sure. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, absolutely. So the point of the show for those people who are out there who have never probably heard one of these before is I try to kind of connect with people who are medical students applying for ophthalmology and also current ophthalmologists or even residents who are training in ophthalmology at the moment. So the most fun for me is talking to the medical students because at the end of the day, someday we might become colleagues. We might become, you know, see each other at conferences, like I've said before. So it's cool to make possibly lifelong friends on this platform. And maybe we'll look back someday and be like, why are we talking on a laptop? That's kind of crazy, but here we are. Yeah, I think maybe in the future it'd be holograms or something. Yeah, exactly. See, you're already thinking ahead. So tell everybody where you're from. I know you're in Arkansas now, but you weren't always in Arkansas. Yeah, um, so I grew up in eastern Arkansas, small town, 4,000, um, and then I ended up going to undergrad at Berkeley, spent a good four years there, and then I moved back here for medical school. I was super excited to be close to family again, but pretty much as soon as I got into medical school, my parents got up and left, and uh, they live in Southern California now, so... So they ran away from you. They're like, yeah, 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 we don't want to be around your med school stress. We're out. We're out. Bye. Good luck with all that. You're on your own. Pretty much. I think my mom was tired of doing my laundry and cooking eggs for me or something. I don't know. Oh, that's fair. <laughs> hey. So kind of tell everybody why you're interested in ophthalmology and what, uh, what drew you to ophthalmology. Uh, for sure. So um, at the University of California, they have this um, optometry school there. Mm -hmm. And I knew I wanted to be a doctor. And um, I guess part of the application process is doing research and I just kind of slipped in, um, my application into the College of Optometry there mm -hmm. and they have a lot of wet labs and stuff about the eyes so um, a lab accepted me and I spent a good three years doing research on the eyes um, and it was a really good experience um, I don't think I really like PCRs and cultures yeah, and stuff sure. like that but sure, I really sure. enjoyed was um, so I was in charge of managing all the mice and treating our mice and then doing dissections of their eyes and I would spend hours under a microscope just like cutting their eyes and I loved it I would just sit there quietly or uh -huh. with music and it was just the best thing ever just sure. being with my hands and like cutting things and yeah stuff so I was like man if I can do stuff like this in the future I'd love to mm -hmm. um so when I got into medical school I kind of shadowed a couple ophthalmologists just to see it was still going to be as like exciting for me to watch sure. those surgeries. Right, right. And I still liked it. So I was like, hmm, maybe I should just go with it. <laughs> yeah. What did you listen to when you were, when you were practicing on, on those, on those mice? Anything in particular uh, I should know about good music for future suturing and stuff? Um, I'm pretty basic. I think it's always like the top 100 or top 50 global kind of things. Yeah. Yeah, I think in college I was too cheap to even um, pay for Spotify, so I had Pandora with the ads and everything. Oh, oh man. So you had to like intermittently pause and like zone out and like listen to the ad from like an auto store and then go back into the mice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's but cool. now I have like the family Spotify plan. There you go. Same here. Nice, nicely done. Yeah. Free. So you have honestly belong Spotify then, obviously. Oh. Of course. Yeah, shameless plug, but you have it on there. That's great. Good to know. It's on Spotify, everybody. We have it on Spotify, but yeah. So that's cool. So you, you, you found ophthalmology and you've been going at it since. And Arkansas is a great program. We actually have a, you and I have a mutual friend that we just found out about who's there, Sia Siddiqui. So you met, you met him just recently, right? Yeah, I was in the middle of my um, ophthalmology program. Um, I met him a couple years ago because he did his medical school in Arkansas, too. Uh, right, right. And um, we were just talking about, like, how people have been using social media to network since all the aways have been canceled. Mm -hmm. And he brought up, like, this guy from Ohio. And I was like, you know, I think he's talking about Bilal. So I asked him, 
are you talking about Bilal? And he goes, yeah, how do you know him? And then I pull out my phone and I go on Twitter. I'm like, look, this is all the amazing things he's doing. He's super no, cool. No, no, no. I wish he could have come to Arkansas and done his rotation with me. But yeah, that's how that's we amazing. found out that we have a mutual friend. Yeah, I guess we would have been rotating the same time there together. Probably actually, yeah, like July, June. We would have been on the same, which is kind of insane because we still met. So life works out pretty crazy sometimes. But all yeah. Of stuff. yeah. Shout out to Zia. Hope, Zia, hopefully he's doing okay over there and residency is not treating him too bad. But anyways, you also have, so not only are you in Arkansas, but your little sister's in Arkansas too, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're both on Twitter. So talk about her a little bit and how, how it's been like going through med school with her. Yeah, so uh, my sister, she is super into her Twitter stuff. Um, she's a rising M2. Um, I think she wants to pursue not ophthalmology, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. But uh, she found a mentor who is pretty prominent on um, med Twitter. Okay. And so he was like, maybe you should try to start that. So she did, and she loves it. She loves connecting with people, hearing their stories. Uh -huh. So she pushed me to make one too, and I was like, oh, okay. But um, I typically only stick to, like, the ophthalmology stuff. But it's been really impactful. Like, I love the experience of meeting people and hearing about people and yeah. staying up to date on all the resources. It's, it's been really great. Sweet. sweet. I'm guessing you can what I'm do and learn from those, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's my dinner time activities. What webinar is on tonight? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's your new Netflix, sadly. So, <laughs> but that's good. At least it's productive. Sometimes I put my watching like streaming service. I'm like, should I really be doing this? I should probably branch off and probably do something a little bit more with my time. But hey, that's good though. So also outside of, you know, medicine stuff, what else do you and your sister like to do while you're in Arkansas together? Anything fun? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so because of COVID, it kind of domesticated us. Both of us are like busy bodies. We're always going somewhere, doing something, mm -hmm. but now yes. you can't go anywhere. Um, so we both kind of uh, took it on ourselves to learn how to cook. And yes, we, neither of us knew how to cut an onion or like, what is an onion? We were just <laughs> awful at it. Um, but we, we, we learned um, a lot of the things we try to cook are Asian style foods sure. that, uh, you know, our family isn't here anymore, so we can't eat that kind of stuff. And then okay. Little Rock doesn't have the best Asian restaurants. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we've been learning to cook stuff like that. Um, last night, we actually made homemade dumplings. Oh, so. well done. Wow, that's a big deal. Okay. What about, like, do you guys enjoy Thai food? I love Thai food. Oh, yes. So okay. we found two really good Thai recipes. I'll have to oh, send them to nice. you if you're into trying stuff. But um, there's one Pad Thai recipe we really like. Mm -hmm. And the other recipe is, um, I think, Drunken Noodles. And nice. it's a New York Times cooking recipe. So okay. Gotcha. Oh, I'll have to, you have to share that with me after this now. Now that I know. Yeah, I did not know that before. So now I know that you have this, all these ideas already. So mm -hmm. I actually had a lot of vegan pad thai over covid but then i realized like these are not these are pretty still high carb so i once i found that out i was like very guilty about it but you know have to go with the times and kind of adjust as we need it but it's okay vegan pad thai is great so i, I recommend that okay. so also you just recently did speaking of your ophthalmology stuff that we talked about a little bit while ago um you just did your rotation in ophthalmology for the first time at uh, arkansas so talk about that and you even present on grand rounds yeah, I did. Um, so here at UMS, they have, they work out at three hospitals. They work at the Children's Hospital, mm -hmm. the VA, and then at UMS, the University Hospital. So okay. I spent a week at each of the um, hospitals, and then the last week was kind of a freebie. I got to go wherever I wanted. Right. And it was really cool to see how each hospital is so different. Like, the mm -hmm. patient population is different. The things you see in people's eyeballs are different. Um, yeah. But I really enjoyed it. I don't know which hospital is my favorite. And um, I think it was, I was really lucky because all the faculty, um, they don't, I don't think they get to meet a lot of students that are interested. So yeah. as soon as you say like, this is what I want to do, they're like, what, this is what you want to do? Let me show you everything. And it's, I love the support, which is yeah. really comforting to know when you're trying to pursue something like that. Right, right. They, I feel like it's pretty nice when they're excited about you being excited and it just goes both ways, so. Exactly. That's, really cool. That's awesome. Were you planning on doing, I, I so I'm just curious because you have a home department where you, where you, for you, I, I've never heard this perspective, but were you planning on doing a ways or were you pretty much set on doing your rotation at Arkansas and then moving forward from there? Right. Um, I had applied to, I think like four or five different away rotations. Mm -hmm. Most of them were at, like in big cities where I have friends or family. Yeah, yeah, sure. 
you know how it is in medicine. You get so caught up doing your own thing. You don't have time to really spend with your loved ones. Mm -hmm. So I, I had a couple applications out in California. And then a lot of my mom's side of the family lives in the East Coast. So cool. um, a couple of applications over there. But uh, I guess it didn't work out, but it's okay. I hey, it's right. still yeah. talk to those people every day. So it's now you can visit for just fun, hopefully. So yeah. now you don't have to crouch, uh, couch crash and then worry about waking up early to go on a rotation. You can just hopefully visit them when you can, maybe fourth yeah. year. Fourth year is a great time to vacation and see people. So you never know. I think so. I think I'm going to plan a couple road trips or something during Ooh, fourth year. Fun. Hopefully fun. it'll be safer then. Yeah, well, let's we'll see. Are you going to do anyone, any, like, are, are there going to be anywhere close? Are you going to go East Coast, West Coast for the road trips, or what? What's the plan? Yeah, I think I want to go all the way to, like, California and visit my parents. Oh, wow. You're going to drive? Or do you do the drive? Like, how far is that? It's, I've done it twice. It's 22 hours. It's pretty far. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Please tell me you're not doing that 22-hour drive alone. No, I think I'll get, like, my sister and then um, some friends to go with us. Okay, something. yeah, just make sure your sister's not on Twitter the whole time. She keeps you company when you're driving. <laughs> Otherwise, that's not fair. I would be so pissed my sister's in, you know, help out a little bit. Yeah, um, knowing us will probably be, like, we love gas station snacks. Like, oh, you, know, okay. you know, it's a guilty pleasure, right? It is, when, it is. When you're at home, you don't really buy bad food because you're like, I need yeah. to be healthy. For but sure. on road trips, it's like, well, we got to treat ourselves a couple times. <laughs> so yeah, our go-to is like Doritos and um, all the bad things. <laughs> that's fine. No one, it just doesn't count. They're empty. When, when you're on a road trip, those calories just don't exist, right? They're just, it's, it goes to an imaginary place. So that's how I see it. I try to see it that way. Because then it's like you have to relive your childhood again, you know? Like when you stop one of those road trips with your parents and whatever, and you drive down. Like, I don't know. I used to love those when I was a kid, so... And like last night, it's like really sad. This is how I know I'm becoming an adult. Last night, me and my roommate were watching Ozark. I don't know if you've seen Ozark. It's a great show. Awesome show. You watch Ozark? Oh, great, great show. So I had already finished it, but he's on season three. So like, it's really tough because I'm like, oh, big plot just about to happen. I'm like dying. So it's actually really hard to be that on that perspective. But so I've already seen the show. And then I was like, I'm really hungry. So I was like, I don't want to eat something bad right now, but also I don't want to make something. So I went to Kroger and just got peaches. And I was like, this is the saddest midnight snack of all time so that's how i know we're growing old but anyways yeah ozark is great though we have to we have to catch up on our ozark uh review sometime yeah. they also announced the last season now it's, it's, almost, it's almost over the fourth season's coming out and that'll be it so i'm only halfway through the second season so oh was... okay i can't ruin anything for you see that's what you had to tell me beforehand all right see i had no idea you even watched the show and now i'm definitely not going to say anything more so I'll oh, no. all good, all good. Mm -hmm. for the first time i'll actually stop talking so that's <laughs> good so you talked about, you know, you like to cook, you love ophthalmology, you're really excited to apply for it, you've had great mentors, and then you did Grand Round. So what was your Grand Round presentation like? You just, I saw it on Twitter. Um, it was really chill. I think it was more relaxing because I could do it at home. Like, I literally did it right here. <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't know that. Interesting. Yeah, and it was um, over Zoom, so huh. I felt it was pretty chill. I couldn't really see what everyone else was doing, mm -hmm. and it pretty much just seemed like I was talking to myself, so... I think it made it easier to do. Yeah. Um, but I invited my dad to watch. Oh, okay, cool. I was I was on my way home from the hospital, and I was like, Dad, I have to give this grand round presentation tonight. And he was like, I want to. I want to. <laughs> and I was like, Dad, I mean, I want you to come, but do you know how to use Zoom? Like before yeah. you join, do you know <laughs> how to mute your microphone? Yeah, and yeah. Get off your camera. And he's like, Oh yeah, yeah. I I've done that plenty of times. <laughs> And so I'm like, oh, I think I'm on slide five or something. Mm -hmm. And you hear this man in the background. Oh, no. <laughs> it, it's my dad. Uh -huh. Spoiler alert. Okay. And, uh, he's saying, like, I'm in a conference. I'm in a conference. It's my daughter. This is my daughter. I'm in a conference. <laughs> and he keeps saying it. And I was like, oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, a couple slides in, and he keeps talking about, like, this is a conference that my daughter's in. <laughs> so uh, I'm like, hi, everyone. So I joined, or I had my dad join our uh, Zoom. But yeah. uh, he's listening. Can you please mute your microphone? <laughs> <laughs> Attention, all dads in the audience. Please stop. <laughs> That's crazy. so funny. That's but um, luckily, my attendings, they, they didn't 
that he's mm-hmm. here. And at the very end, they're very sweet. Like in the chat, they're like, your dad should be so proud of you. Oh, that's awesome. It was that's fun. Cool. He, he was that's just cool. so excited. It was yeah, so yeah. It's, it's fun for them, I think, to watch us growing up and doing things and being our own people now. And I don't know, like my dad, my dad. Okay, so it's actually funny. My dad does not have Instagram. My dad does not have Twitter or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But ever since I made Honestly Bilal, he made an Instagram and he's like always checking. He's like, you have this many views on this one. You have this many views on this one. And he's always the first one. Like he, after I'm done with interviews, besides like the person I interviewed with and once it's edited, edited and they're happy with it, I always send it to my dad first. And he always like, he, he always says good things. So I'm always like, come on, dad, be a little bit more critical of me, please. I'd appreciate it. But he's a big fan. He's a big, their parents are the biggest fans always, so. Sure. That is so precious. I know, I know. He's gonna watch this too and be like, why did you tell everybody that I love the show so much? I'm like, I had to. I'd put a plug for you, but you know. I thought I was your number one fan, but now I know I'm your number two, and your dad's your number one. He's just a, he's almost a contributor at this point because he's always giving me like, oh, I like how you did this on this one. I love the graphics on this one. I'm like, thanks, Dad. I'm glad you like the color scheme. So that's <laughs> it's good to have that loyal fan. So I'm glad I always have him around. But yeah so precious it is it is well anyways victoria it was great meeting you do you want to tell anybody where you're at on twitter so they can follow you and network with you if possible oh yeah um it's at victoria the letter v and then ly that's, perfect that's so your handle. all right so we'll get more people to follow you on twitter hopefully some more ophthalmologists attendings to see all the cool things that victoria has been up to and uh, keep putting yourself out there keep connecting with me and again i love meeting people on here and making friends so i would love to have you come back um, later on in the, in the application season or whenever you want and we'll talk more about what's going on with us for sure anytime anytime all right well we'll see you next time everybody thanks for joining on this episode of honestly Blue all and we'll see you out there all right bye bye